Okay, so we start with, uh, well, I'm just uh, doing a recap of uh, where we're coming from uh, for now. So we uh, installed or configured NFS shared folder on Windows 2012 and then created a data store there, uh, which was lacking some features uh, because it's not VMFS, um, VMware file system. So then we went for iSCSI disks on Windows 2012 R2. Uh, I, we did install this iSCSI uh, and uh, had that uh, LAN shared with the two data centers. But uh, um, when we are going to do the vMotion and other uh, features, fault tolerance and vMotion, uh, we're going to test on this one. If it doesn't work, uh, we're going to have still, we may have to use OpenFiler or uh, Starwind or FreeNAS. There are many other software that do the same, that offer the same iSCSI uh, features. And, uh, uh, but we're gonna still try Windows 2012 first uh, for iSCSI and uh, put it to test for all the high availability features. Uh, so t for now, all the VMFS uh, related uh, operating system features were showing there, like thin provisioning, thick provisioning, we could change a lot of those uh, and other features. Uh, when we uh, created this size CSI disks. Um, so once we created that, then we went for, <clears throat> we downloaded and installed. So this is the last session where we downloaded and installed vCenter appliance, VM4, uh, vSphere 5.5, where, uh, so this was our uh, sixth machine, uh, but I, I shut down one of the other machines. So still the fifth machine and uh, we then first we installed the VM which is a separate independent VM uh, virtual machine inside our VMer workstation the virtual vCenter appliance and uh, then we uh, configured it over the, uh, with the browser and then we tried to connect to that uh, vCenter uh, uh, appliance uh, with uh, the web client so that was interesting and there was some troubleshooting as well but it's all in the video so um we could follow that and uh, i'm just gonna put uh, you know reload that video and with the audio as well and i'm just double checking the audio yeah it's working fine for today uh, in the recording so uh, lots of things to do today and uh, we're gonna just uh, very clearly create a lot of uh, you know, uh, there will be a scenario for creating a network uh, and uh, playing with V switches. Um, so uh, there is, we're going to be adding four network cards uh, to both these XI hosts and uh, uh, talk about the network side as well. Uh, all the features of V switch zero, and then we're going to create more V switches, uh, V switch one, two, three as well. Uh, and talk about uh, their features. So, um, uh, VM Kernel Pro Group has an IP address. So, this is some of the information that we're going to revisit. But for now, uh, this is overall uh, work we're going to do. While talking about the concepts of uh, this uh, um, uh, network concepts uh, we're going to talk about, but we're going to do the lab as well. So we don't waste, uh, you know, uh, the time for lab is still uh, available there. So I'm going to just uh, now, uh, we're going to start talking about uh, the network while doing the lab as well. I hope uh, uh, someone is following me. And uh, so let's see how it goes so first of all are the all the you know virtual network uh, definitions their uh, v switch is software based network switch uh, and uh, it, uh, it's offering vm kernel uh, which is a management port uh, and uh, provides network connectivity yeah, it's inside the uh, vm kernel layer network layer Uplink is a link to a physical Ethernet adapter, VLAN, a logical network configuration. We're going to be talking about all this. Oh, highly. Uh, so, um, just going ahead, port group, a network label and common configurations that uh, we will be configuring. We're going to be, uh, you know, talking about these uh, definitions, terminologies again. Uh, when we are doing the lab, but I'm just going through uh, a refresher here. Uh, you must have 
you know, uh, I just wouldn't talk about that before as well. Uh, VM kernel port, uh, we're going, uh, which is a special virtual switch port that provides access to iSCSI, NAS, vMotion, fault tolerance, logging, management for vSphere 5. So uh, VM kernel port is the one that offers uh, many management features and uh, uh, we're going to be discovering those uh, when we uh, do create uh, some uh, vKernel ports as well uh, and uh, distribute it among the switches and uh, distribute among the physical network cards. We're going to talk about that and all the scenario. Uh, but what we need to understand is that uh, there are port groups for uh, a network label as well as common configuration. For example, uh, you know, a port group for uh, all the virtual machines, VM network port group uh, for the VM kernel port and a port group for, you know, like uh, vMotion, we can create a separate port group or fault tolerance and management. We're gonna do that and try to understand that as well. Uh, so it is also known as the management port, the VM kernel port. When you install ESXi host for the first time, a management port is automatically created. So uh, let's check it out as well inside the virtual standard switch. So there's a vSwitch 0 uh, created inside the ESXi uh, when we install that uh, by default. So the kernel port is there available. The management port connects the ESXi host um, to the outside world. And management port can be uh, of following four types. So four types of uh, management ports uh, can be there. But uh, I think uh, uh, the, those following uh, port types are is somewhere else. But uh, they are th these um, vMotion, FT, logging, uh, VM network, and management. So I'm going to let's go back there and check it out. If I go to my lab and drag that to the screen here um and uh, so i'm on uh, inside my uh, vcenter web client and there's that uh, data center uh, for uh, new york and toronto and then we have esxi hosts uh, and when i click esxi host there is the manage and then networking already we have gone through storage i will still revisit it after uh, we are we are done with the virtual standard switch and uh, distributed switch uh, you know uh, labs so uh, okay for now it's uh, networking for both hosts here we already have so many machines it, also i uh, received a request that i should review what we did in last session so that was uh, we created some templates if i right click this so this is just a quick area uh, new virtual machine in last session what we did was just wanted to show that interface action is not available for any other selected objects okay what action is not available for any such objects. okay right click again and new virtual machine while I was talking about networking, uh, there was, I just remembered that there's, there was that request. So we did that deploy form template and uh, clone an existing virtual machine, clone virtual machine template and everything. Then we did the virtual appliance, right? Um, now when you or any of you, if uh, you're following me or trying to do the lab with me, uh, you would see that uh, only vSwitch 0 will be available there. And uh, we switch zero should only be available there. Uh, the thing is that I was doing uh, some testing and uh, I'll try to refresh uh, the host settings uh, by clicking this button um, just to make sure that only we see zero appears and not one and two. Uh, there's a refresh network going on here because I'm sure I deleted these switches uh, we're gonna create them again and uh, try to know why and uh, you know try to talk about the scenario but I think uh, they're not gone so let me just click that we switch to and remove one by one I tried to do that a bit quick so 
I didn't like that um, so just trying to remove all the traces to the previous practices and remove standard switch V switch 2 um, there are two scenarios where we're going to be uh, trying to uh, know the you know virtual NICs the role of virtual NICs v kernel adopters port groups v switches and then uh, the physical NICs and why each of these will be used in what scenario what are their features and functions um since it's terribly fast so the deleting operation although i did delete them i think i deleted the above host esxi hosts okay anyway uh, they are being deleted right now so uh, what we were talking about is that okay we switch zero will be there always uh, when we uh, create the first host so let's go back and check while you know all the other things are gone um, so there is that VM kernel port uh, which supports the management operations uh, then there are port groups of uh, and those port groups could be just the virtual machine networks uh, so if I say virtual machine networks oh, there's a diagram here actually um, so if I put it bigger now um, so this is local area network, then these are the physical network cards, uh, then this is, these are the virtual switches inside the hosts and the virtual net network adopters that are connected to the virtual machines. So each of our virtual machine has one network adopter, which is supposed to be connected to the already created one virtual switch. And that virtual switch is already supposed to be connected to a physical NIC, the default or the first physical NIC. And that physical NIC is, of course, connected to the local network, like local switch, and then connected to other networks. Uh, so uh, what we wanted to uh, go ahead with was just an overall picture of that our virtual network looks like a physical network uh, so physical switch uh, all the servers are connected there then they are connected to the virtual switches and uh, the physical network this is a host and the, the two physical network cards virtual switches there and then all the virtual machines with each uh, virtual nick are there so click that well and go ahead virtual machine network concepts virtual machines in a data center connect to networks similar to how machines are networked in a physical environment of course so if we want to go ahead and check it out there okay now we have just one uh, v switch so what i'm doing is i'm connecting through uh, clicking the host and going to manage and then going to the networking tab and then the first one is virtual switches here and then there's the v switch zero but if we go down uh here we'll see that um this virtual switch is so all the virtual machines so all these virtual machines which we have been created uh, we have been creating before hey so, um okay so there's a uh comment in the chat uh, from Fuzzy that is we switch automatically connected to physical NIC or we connected so by default uh, this is the physical NIC it is automatically um, connected yeah I'm recording <laughs> thank you for the yeah let me just drag that here okay cool so uh, yes uh, it is the first first we switch uh, so you remember that uh, uh, welcome <clears throat> Fuzzy you remember that we were creating all those virtual machines and uh, we didn't touch a, this virtual switch or any virtual networking and we did not touch uh, physical network cards or any network cards for that matter on the SXI host um, although we did not test the pinging as well but what happens is that when you create a virtual machine without touching anything then this virtual switch is already created there and all the virtual machines so if i click vm9 here and uh, just click again uh, it is showing this is a virtual switch this is the uh, left side is the virtual part 
of that uh, this switch and right side is the physical uh, components of this switch so there, this is these are the physical cards of the host and uh, you should be or whoever is following me should be seeing just one I just added the second one myself um, and uh, so these machines yes are automatically connected to the first so v0 is there so the virtual machine when created is automatically connected to the first virtual switch here and then that virtual switch is automatically connected to the first physical network card we don't have to connect that but uh, anyone else is uh, following me can also see that there uh, okay so we're going to be starting to uh, make some changes there um, I am sure that I removed all the network cards, but it's still showing here to me. Um, so guys, uh, those who are following me, uh, I'm just going to add four network cards to both of the ESXi hosts. So well, I'm just gonna start drawing that too. So we could have, so there are these two ESXi hosts we have. And uh, we're going to, so I'm just going to uh, show that with this. So there are, okay, three more network cards I'm going to add. There's already one network card here. So I'm just going to add a total of uh, four network cards here and four here. So we're gonna just start creating uh, more and more. Uh, so these are the physical network cards that we will be uh, creating now. So these will be the physical next. And uh, so, um, okay. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. Okay. So physical next, and uh, let me just create those uh, right now. Then we're going to start drawing inside each virtual machine. Um, yeah. So we will be first adding uh, network cards to both ESXi hosts. So let me just yeah put that as well. ESXi host. ASXI host and uh, so uh, then we're going to be uh, trying to so ASXI host uh, both will be here and uh, let me just do this first uh, I'm adding four physical NICs then I'm going to start adding uh, virtual NICs a virtual switch VM NICs and machines here so we could understand what's going on step by step while we are also going to be talking about the concepts behind those. Um, so if we want to add the four physical network cards, so uh, when you have a new server, uh, when a company buys a new server, normally nowadays it's like uh, uh, three or uh, four network cards are always there uh, according to the configuration or the way we order okay so now okay let me just okay there's a mutiny by kids uh, just give me a second my class put on the four by Okay, so yeah, uh, kids were out. <clears throat> okay, so um, yeah, what we were talking about is that I'm going to add four physical network cards uh, and uh, try to uh, then add them to the to show that in the vCenter that they're added. So first of all, I'm going to check ESXi01 here. 
uh, and right click and go to settings in our VMware workstation environment we can add four network cards oh that's why uh, so I already had this so it's one two three four five so i'm just gonna remove one from here in fact let's have five network cards so i'm just gonna add that back again network adopter next um oh one more thing guys i needed to actually show you that uh they don't get really so let me just uh, do you remember from the last session that when we were adding hard disks um they were when we added the hard disks we didn't have to restart the esxi server we just went to the vcenter and did a rescan and they were discovered uh, but that seems not to be the case here for network cards when i start adding these network cards so for now uh, let me just uh, try to make sure that network adopters are not there so if i go to an esxi host then to the manage then to the networking and go to the physical network adopters all are showing there and uh, if i click refresh or rescan okay refresh that does not uh, take them away so when I restart, then uh, they will, so I'm just going to restart only one just to make that point. And that's going to be quickly. I'm not going to restart the second one. So I'll just keep them at it there and just re react. So restart the guest. I'm just going to restart the first one. And uh, when it restarts or comes back online, uh, the ESXi host, uh, so then we will see that network cards will automatically upda uh, be updated uh, so what we can say here is that uh, uh, so I could write it here uh, once uh, Phoenix Phoenix is the physical Nick is added restart the host so this is just uh, an extra thing that uh, uh, okay so I'm just going to go back there and the first host is still starting the second one uh, uh, so uh, I just wanted to show that it needs a restart for that so the second one I did not remove anything they are added so total of five so one was already there by default in our ESXi hosts one physical network card I've just added four more um, while the second host uh, just to show that it is not uh, adding what we do, we do have to restart so this means in a production environment if there's a downtime uh, that you would be asking or you will be doing that on the weekends and uh, uh, for just to add more network cards if you're adding for uh, so I'm just gonna go for ESXi 2 which is not restarting and uh, check my network setting there so clicking ESXi 02 and uh, it is still opening on the same tabs on the two where all the network cards are showing perfectly so there are total of five network cards here uh, from zero to four so that's what i wanted to see here and i wanted to see on the second host as well so if i click back that again is it now it's back so it's going to take a little a few more seconds to for it to be connected uh, perfectly with the e6i01 and uh, let's get it uh, so it's going to just communicate in a few you know one or two minutes maybe uh, and second one is already there so what we did is we already added four physical network cards uh, to the ESXi host and uh, there is only one V switch now uh, but if I go back so if I want to create a V switch here
there is uh, only one so I we just saw that we switch zero here and uh, here as well so I'm just gonna quickly create here so although the switch is there uh, the extra network cards I added uh, and there are five actually so let me just present the actual picture what I'm doing uh, so if the five five are there it is already connected to the first one but all the rest which I added just now they are not going to be automatically connected they are there they are available um, so maybe even in data centers the network is not connected to these switches while this one I can so this is the physical NIC and this is a V switch and this is supposed to be of course uh, connected to a physical switch as well so physical NIC to physical switch and it is coming from virtual switch let me just create the whole diagram of what we have just now um, so I'm just gonna type here physical switch okay um, and virtual switch and these are physical NICs here and then what we have inside is so let me just create that as well uh, the virtual machines so we have like four or five virtual machines or six or seven of them per host but our connections are like that so each virtual machine is automatically connected to the only available virtual switch as soon as we create a new virtual machine it is supposed to connect to a local network so they connect to a virtual switch virtual switch is uh, connected to the uh, already available first network uh, physical network card and that that physical network card is supposed to be connected to physical switch that is just you know something we assume that of course it's supposed to be uh, if you want the machines to communicate to the outside world uh, so we have uh, this scenario then we added four more uh, physical network cards here uh, so one virtual switch is still there and then there are port groups that we're going to be talking about right now uh, the port groups that are showing here will be uh, so let me just uh, get it um, so there is vm network port group which means that traffic from the virtual machines uh, can go through this group of ports I'm just saying group of ports but it's uh, you know the terminology of port group uh, that's being used but this is still a type of traffic that this uh, you know setting is responsible for that for the flow of that type of traffic so VM network uh, port group is there I'm gonna talk about that in more detail uh, there's a uh, many okay then this is one port group or one type of traffic this virtual switch is already supporting the traffic between virtual machines going through this VM network port group to the network physical network card and then to the physical switch and then there is that uh, management or VM kernel uh, port group and this is responsible for all the management tasks uh, the so uh, there is a, a question in chat that is like a vlan no it's uh, you know uh, vlan is like you're uh, giving a specific flow uh, and vlan setting so when we are talk technically uh, conceptually you can say it is kind of a vlan but uh, okay any vm net traffic has to go through vm network port group only within the same v switch uh, but we uh, technically when we talk about a uh, VLAN is a separate setting that we can define alongside this
this VM network portal. So when you create a, even a new virtual machine, uh, there is an option of setting up a VLAN as well for that particular one virtual machine. We have created seven or eight, right? So VLAN setting is separately technically available, but this is a port group uh, that through uh, that is responsible for a certain type of configuration. In our case, this is the certain uh, the configuration is that okay this port group is responsible for all the traffic coming from the uh, directly connected virtual machines. There is another port group called management port group that is responsible for uh, for the management traffic. So we are connecting um, uh, our vCenter for what for management, right? So we are connecting through vCenter. We are connecting through vSphere uh, client, uh, web client. Uh, directly or through vCenter and then there are some other management specific tasks like migration of virtual machines so there's a vMotion port group that we can add uh, there is a virtual SAN that we can create uh, and there are uh, you know other types of uh, traffic that we're going to be talking about in the slide uh, but management port group within this virtual switch so there could be uh, I, how can I uh, I'll just try to create a small port uh, how does the port how should the port look like okay and uh, okay port and suppose there are three port groups uh, so the traffic is going from these the these virtual machine uh, traffic is uh, actually going through this suppose this is the vm network port group through this it is going ahead to the uh, you know that first uh, one physical nick that is available there okay there's a, a question in the chat uh, about vMotion and vSAN. So there are port groups within one switch. I can uh, uh, talk, uh, tell about port group in this way that if you have a physical switch, suppose, and uh, uh, Othaya's question was, uh, uh, can be referred here as well, that suppose if you have a physical switch and did we, do we all, I'm sure we all saw a physical switch, right? So. Uh, if I is drag out a picture of a physical switch, that would be physical switch and get it to the images. And I just want one cute little physical switch here. Okay, not little, maybe big. So if we have, um, okay, physical switch like this. So one switch but there are different ports and just like uh, Othaya says that is it VLAN although it is not VLAN VLAN is a separate feature within that virtual switch but it acts like so port groups is like these this number of ports or this set of ports is responsible for all the virtual machines traffic only then from the same virtual switch that is all created there by default you can introduce a separate set of port groups that is responsible just for connection of management tasks. So uh, just like in the switch, you have a port uh, that you connect, a console port that you connect for management tasks, right? Uh, you must have all connected to the switches, right? Manage, manage switches in Cisco. So there's a management port, console port that is called, uh, from which you can just manage the whole switch uh, and uh, you know choose the options and give commands. And so there is a management port or VM kernel port which is uh, responsible for uh, management connections. And <clears throat> within this, suppose this these six ports is a set of one port group. So when we say port group, it's you know number of ports uh, together so this is the management port and then we say okay these two of the six management ports i am uh, you know putting uh, v motion traffic only on these two ports then oh there's v sand connection coming uh, virtual sand connection coming from another device so i'm just going to dedicate these two specific ports out of the six management ports 
I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, create another connection between this. So these two will be just responsible for vMotion between the two hosts, and these two will be responsible just for. So what we are saying is that management port group supports many types of management tasks. So when we talk about uh, management port group, uh, I, uh, this topic is still coming actually, and I since it's there, um, I wanted to show, yeah, this is the diagram. So within same virtual switch, you can have virtual machine port groups. Even suppose these, uh, I, we have nine virtual machines connected to the same virtual switch, right? Uh, if if I say that, I should show that too. So this is a virtual switch that was already created. And these are all the virtual machines that are just connected to this one virtual switch, right? These are all virtual machines within the same. And if I go down here, uh, within the same switch, there is a port group responsible for VM network. And within the same virtual switch, there is a management network, just like there was a console port and there was other normal ports in the, that switch picture. This one switch, virtual switch is also offering a VM network for just virtual machine traffic and management network just for you know management traffic like vCenter. And then it offers vMotion traffic as well if we enable that or activate that. And it offers vSAN traffic as well, this one management network. So, and we're gonna create those. We're gonna create those port groups and we're going to add those port groups here just to check and see how it all get, you know, how we can use those features and uh, how do we enable them and uh, put them where they're supposed to be. Okay, there's another chat uh, comment there. Uh, these are coming from Nick server. So for vMotion and uh, uh, vSAN, we need to refer to uh, to specific, specify the Nick. Yeah, yeah. No, it still shows, so the first comment was from uh, Ali that uh, yes, we need to specify special NIC for that. It is recommended to do that. Although technically, I can just add vMotion, um, you know, port group here as well in the vSwitch 0. I can add vSAN port group here in that vSwitch 0. And these two network cards or maybe even if I add two more and four network cards, they will be NIC teamed together to share the load. So yes, uh, we're gonna do that all. Uh, that question early that uh, we're going to address that uh, during the class uh, later a little because uh, I'm gonna be adding uh, all the switches and I'm gonna be adding all the cards and we're going to be talking about, uh, then we're gonna add the VM kernel adopters as well. You're welcome. Okay, Fussy, uh, there's a comment from Fussy that uh, it still shows two. Yeah, it is showing two NICs from, for EXI01. Um, let me check that. It is restarted. And if I refresh, I think I have to log off and log in from there because uh, so I'm refreshing it and it should be showing just one NIC now. Uh, let me check. I still have one nick, right? This is the ASXI server. What? Uh, hmm. Okay. So I did remove all those. And I'm checking the second one, which I did not touch. And yeah, then I added five as well. Yeah, okay. So yeah, the two will be showing there. So let me just remove the second ones from the switch. Um, so so we could have that uh, first. So let me, can I select all of them at the same time? Nope. Okay, selecting one and it's, Kind of slow here. Hmm. Okay. So we'll be doing that. So guys, I did remove that. Uh, 
we switch and it's so the weird things are going on it's already started and running that v center let me just log out and log in again because um it's not really abiding by my commands what i'm doing it's not doing that so log out from here and uh, so in front of you i deleted v switch one and v switch two and it's there still there okay so log out log in maybe they're cached or that information is still there um okay so i'm just gonna try to log back in and try to create that environment where we can check all the features and you know in in case you know web client starts doing stuff on me i'll start the vSphere client as well as a backup because it has its own window or separate console so no browser built um you know corruptions or anything any plugin not working or freezing or something when this has its own console it mostly runs smooth anyway i'm just going to log in from there but i'm not going to use that because uh, we need to get used to this uh, web client, which is the future. Oh, which is the future, <laughs> that sentence. OK, so uh, I'm just going back there and trying to check with ESXi01 if it has started to, you know what, uh, show what I configured and not show what I did not. So let's check it out again virtual switch ah i hate it okay again we switch to remove i'm just gonna leave it like that and uh inhale exhale and try to just uh you know make sure that While ESXi01 is like this, uh, let me check if ESXi02 is okay. Okay, I should have been here. So, um, and there are two NICs I added for load balancing uh, before. And uh, if I just remove vnic1 here, close. So we, when we start doing the task, we're gonna understand that. Um, so what we were talking about was that uh, there are, let me just scroll down. Okay, there's one nick showing. So ASX02 is really cooperating. Um, so when we talk about, uh, when we see virtual switch, uh, let me just make that bigger screen. So virtual switch this because of all the machines I created there, they automatically got connected to the VM network or the VM network port group of this one virtual switch here. Um, and that one virtual switch is connected to this network card. And there is one management port, just like in the switch, we have a console port that you connect for managing the switch. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead from this and uh, we already have four physical network cards that were added and when you're doing that at home uh, the only thing you need to know is that when you add those physical adopters just try to restart if when you come back here on the ESXi server go manage networking and net physical adopters uh, they're not gonna show there when you add in the VMware workstation you have to restart that VMware workstation and then come back and then you're gonna see that so when you try that at home, uh, it's going to be like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and uh, talk about that virtual switch. There is that VM network port group, and then there is a management network port group. When we go to VM kernel adopters, which is the, you know, showing the management uh, port, there's only one there. But if I want to show uh, that it, can have more management ports added and each management port 
uh, will be for a different functionality like uh, you want to migrate virtual machines from one host to another you have to enable or add that uh, management port here so I'm just going to uh, try to go inside uh, this one VM kernel adopter which is just a management port on a virtual switch when I go there uh, there are these uh, four tasks uh, management traffic. Yes, it is already through vCenter. We are coming connecting uh, we can also uh, Enable vMotion traffic fault tolerance logging. It's going to try to detect all the settings of fault tolerance uh, v Virtual sand traffic when once we configure vSAN, we're gonna be uh, We're gonna have to then add this port if I uh, So right now I don't need virtual sand. We're going uh, later uh, after you know certain slides where I'm going to be adding that separately but one management port can have can also add these extra port groups uh, which are representative which are going to be responsible for uh, these specific functionalities we motion if you want migration only enable then that between the two hosts on both hosts you need to enable that and then virtual send if you are using this feature only then enable that uh, on this specific host right so um till now virtual switch yes only one is created uh, vm kernel adopter this is that management port that is available in this you know cool diagram of uh, virtual switch and then there is there are those physical adopters that are waiting to be used right now only one or the first physical adopter which was there during the installation of the host is mapped to a virtual switch zero v switch zero others are not being used because they are not connected to any of the virtual switches right so as soon as uh, uh, you know with the passage of time I will try to connect these to the virtual switches I will uh, add to, to that diagram which we have created uh, in the MS paint so let's get going and try to see a little more of uh, those concepts um, so we can have all those port groups within one switch but uh, we're going to be doing some of these so this is a microsoft word file where i've uh, created the uh, major steps i've written the major steps of the labs we're going to be performing today i've already done um this so i'm just gonna do it done it's green um four nicks are added then restart hosts well yeah they were restarted just consider that done as well Let's add one more VNIC to both host switches for load balancing. So the next task uh, that we were supposed to do and then talk about the uh, concepts as well is that if this virtual switch is connected to one network card, um, if that one network card has some fault, uh, that's going to be, you know, uh, it's depending on just that single point of failure one network card plus if so see this already we have so much virtual machines maybe there are suppose there are web servers three web servers and uh, one uh, you know exchange server uh, or and then there are other antivirus servers file servers here as well uh, they're all creating generating traffic and this one uh, network card is only handling this so if we add another network card uh, it's going to be a load balancer. It's going to act as a load balancer. Uh, it's going to share that load between this and uh, also with the network car, the management. But ma we are mainly concerned about uh, load balancing this huge VM uh, virtual machine traffic, right? So uh, we see that already we have four network cards that are sitting there doing nothing. Uh, so if we add one more network card to the same switch, uh, that's going to, uh, you know, be beneficial or, or at least for load balancing that is always happening. Uh, you can plan that this way. Uh, so many of the physical network adopters connected to the selected switch. If I click here just to check what's going on, there's only one network adopter here. And, uh, you know, all the properties are there. Uh, standby adopters, we haven't defined any. Unused adopters are not showing here. But we can add a network adopter for this particular switch because uh, we just uh, 
click add edit for that switch so we're just going to add plus sign here and this is an extra network card that is available um, so can we select more and more I've just pressed the you know shift button and I'm trying to select so if I keep on selecting like this we can just add all of them and if I go for standby adopters or unused adopters we can add that too so standby adopter would be a cool uh, thing to do when you know one network adopter is faulty the standby adopter will become active is supposed to become active um, so but we're going to uh, just add it for load balancing now and we can add an extra network adopter but it's not going to be used and it's going to be standby we can do that but uh, we have a bigger lab to do but now we know that if we want to add an extra adopter we can add it for standby or for unused and it's still activated but uh, being unused and we can just add it that unused to a standby or the or add it to active one it's up to us however we want to right now they are not even uh, you know vcenter doesn't know that there are network cards here right uh, so i'm just going to add this first vm nick here uh, so this should just add load balancing uh, functionality for this virtual switch we are still talking about here the v switch uh, for that v switch uh, we're still talking about that v switch is connecting to a set of network adopters so if i could uh, select yeah um, so now there will be two network adopters being load balanced for that same switch and all the traffic is coming there through this port group of uh, vm network port group which is responsible for virtual machine traffic and uh, you know management traffic is not that much unless we start the v motion or we introduce vsan or we introduce any of those bigger features uh, other than that management uh, is port group is not creating a lot of traffic within that virtual switch so uh, but now we have two network cards dedicated for the same virtual switch traffic right so if i go minimize that and so there are this is the other two network cards showing if i click any of the uh, virtual machine which network card is it connected to uh, so the you know those network cards will be showing there but if i go down here to this only one network card is showing the first one is still responsible for taking management traffic as we know management traffic is not going to be that much uh, so it's okay but when it comes to virtual machine network it is already understood that virtual machines are supposed to generate a lot of traffic so both network cards are working for any of the virtual machine traffic uh, for load balancing right um, in the same virtual switch I can add that extra uh, VM kernel uh, adopter through VM kernel adopter. I can add uh, that port group of vMotion as well. But let's just uh, go with the slide and try to see some more of the uh, things that are being discussed. So if I go back to this okay so virtual machines are just connected like physical network environment where they are connected to virtual network yeah i'm just gonna quit you know go ahead for simple things uh virtual network elements include uh, virtual nix uh standard v, uh, vsphere standard switches this is the vsphere standard switch we were talking about vsphere distributed switch vds that controls multiple vsphere standard switches and uh, it is like you know distributing the policies or making sure that all the smaller switches are following uh, some centralized policies uh, that will be defined by the v vds so we're going to be doing it uh, in next class as well uh, one one lab for this as well and then the port groups that we did talk about a little uh, so port groups the so virtual network elements are these vnix vss tire switch distributed switch and port groups 
each virtual machine has one or more virtual NICs. Okay. Uh, so virtual machines can have their own uh, virtual NICs as well. Till now we haven't done that because we don't have a, I don't have a live virtual machine. So I should be starting one. I hope my memory supports that. I think it will. Uh, so the virtual machine communicates via virtual NIC using standard or optimized device drivers. So uh, this was the diagram that was uh, bef coming before. So these uh, network cards are inside this virtual machine. This network card is inside this virtual machine. They can have their own two or three network cards as well. Maybe this it's an exchange server and you might you want to and it's a Windows 2012 uh, on which there's exchange server and you want Nick teaming Windows 2012 based Nick teaming on this. So you might want to have uh, three virtual NICs. And then there is that virtual switch here, then the physical network card, then the local area network. So uh, each virtual machine has one or more virtual uh, NICs which are connected to the standard switch. Yeah. A virtual NIC has its own MAC address and IP address. Okay. It responds to the standard Ethernet protocol. Uh, similar to a physical NIC, yes, they act like, you know, if they were in a physical environment. An outside agent does not detect that it is communicating with a virtual machine. Um, okay, VM kernel TCP IP network stacking, stack. So there is that uh, network layer of VM kernel that is uh, offering these services over the network. Uh, so iSCSI, we have already used that, but we're going to revisit that again. Uh, NFS, we have uh, created that share remotely, and we were able to create a data store on that. So, uh, and then vMotion, we're going to be doing that fault tolerance and other features that VM kernel network layer is, uh, you know, offering to us. So, uh, virtual machines run their own systems, TCP IP stacks, and connect to the VM kernel at the Ethernet level. Okay they connect uh esxi networking features provide communication between virtual machines on the same host okay so between virtual machines on different hosts and between other virtual machines and physical machines so if we go back uh if we oh okay this guy did not esxi 02 i didn't restart that Anyway, so um, yeah, I did add a second network card to XI2, so it's showing this. I think it should recover soon. Um, so yeah, virtual machines can communicate with each other through these through this virtual switch, of course. Uh, VM9 is trying to share data with VM02 here. So, of course, this virtual switch is uh, letting these two machines within one uh, physical host. Uh, these machines are just communicating with each other. And if they are connected outside, they, the data can be connected. But inside, they are already communicating with each other because there is already a virtual switch there, right? Okay, I did delete virtual switch 2. So, let me just start this deletion of virtual switch 1 as well. Okay, so till now what we are talking about is, yes, those uh, uh, machines are, you know, acting as if they were in a physical network. Then comes the port group. So each port group is identified by a network label. Did you notice a network label there somewhere? So if we go back... Um, we, I do see a network label, so VM network. And so that clearly tells me that, okay, this is responsible for all the virtual machine, uh, traffic management network is a network label there. So, okay. Anything related to management and not related to, you know, that mass traffic coming from all the virtual machines is coming there. Okay. So what else? Um, let's go back. So each port group is identified by a network label, which is unique to the current host. Yes, there's only one VM network 
and there is only one management uh, network port group each port group is unique network labels are used to make virtual machine configuration portable across hosts so vm network uh, port group on this host host 1 and vm network port group on the second host host 2 they would know that okay their traffic will uh, so the virtual machine here on host 2 uh, is going to send traffic through VM network port group to the virtual switch switch so virtual switch will send it to physical network card through physical network to the second host first the physical network card then the virtual switch again then the VM network port group and to the target machine where it the machine one wanted to send the data so vm network one across the platform across the host is the same port group for the virtual machine traffic okay all port groups in data center uh, that are physically connected to the same network uh, in the sense that each can receive broadcast from uh, the others okay so within the same network they can receive broadcast from each other hey i'm alive i'm here Windows 7 is talking, saying that, right, machines always do broadcast. So within the same network, they can do that. Um, okay, virtual network concept, a virtual network, a uh, virtual switch works like a layer 2 physical switch. Each physical host has its own virtual switch or switches. We're going to be creating now more than one switch. Um, in a... We swear distributed switch a single virtual switch spans many hosts. So when we do deploy uh, we swear distributed switch uh, the strange thing is that uh, We know that virtual standard switch is placed inside uh, the e6i host while we swear and the virtual st standard switch has to connect to a physical network card we swear distributed switch is actually going to be created inside a vCenter, not on ESXi host. And it's the its sole purpose is to control all the st virtual standard switches that are placed in different physical hosts. So we're going to be doing that lab as well, just to understand how vSphere distributed switch works and how do they do it control all the you know virtual standard switches. Uh, okay, a virtual switch has port groups. We just talked about that. That connect to virtual machines. Yes, VM network is an example. And uplink connections to physical Ethernet adapter. Uplink means the physical Ethernet adapter and networks. Yeah, we know that. A virtual switch can connect its uplinks to more than one physical Ethernet adapter to enable NIC teaming. Uh, we just did that. Anyone remembers that? So a virtual switch can connect its uplinks to more than one physical Ethernet adapter. How do we do that? Well, yeah, this is already done. So this is one virtual switch connected to two physical NICs. It says there, physical adapters. And uh, they are in NIC team. And uh, they are load balancing already. So everything goes well till now. Okay, uh, when NICs are teamed together, the physical adopters can be used to share the traffic load or provide passive failover if a physical adopter fails or a network outage occurs. We were adding, when I was adding the second network uh, adopter, uh, we did see that option that if we want the second network adopter to be a failover partner or the standby one. We did not do that, so it's going to be just traffic load balancer. Uh, but we can add a third network adopter, uh, which could be a standby one, right? So if we want to do that, then it's going to, you know, fail over if one totally loses it or is lost. Okay. Um, so, all network communication handled by host passes through a virtual switch? Yes. VSphere virtual networks allow virtual machines to communicate with other virtual machines. Okay, we did talk about that. Why is it repeating? Uh, works on layer 2. Okay, 
totally repeating two virtual switches cannot be mapped to the same physical network interface so two physical uh, one physical nick so one virtual switch two one um physical network router but what does it say two virtual switches we're going to create two virtual switches and try to attach it to one that's not going to work if you have two virtual switches you can um you know you have to define a separate network card so let's do that uh two virtual switches cannot and what else vSphere virtual networking allows vmotion migrations between hosts yes we're gonna be adding that too um so till now what we know is from the diagram um that uh, we have two port groups here five network cards here one vSwitch by default all the virtual machines are going through this virtual switch port group of vm network uh, through this physical NIC to the physical switch and there are two network cards we added how about the next step if we go ahead and add add what um, we add to the same v switch uh, v motion port group and v san port group just to see how it is added and just to know oh we can just enable all of them on the same switch this means three different types of traffic is passing through one virtual switch although of course not recommended and we can have you know uh, lots of virtual switches created here but then we're going to expand and scale just to check how can we expand but where to go and enable these other management uh, port groups within the same virtual switch so this means that uh, when this is enabled what we are asked, expecting is that hey you virtual switch you're responsible not only for virtual machine traffic you're responsible for vmotion which means the migration of this second asxi host is going from this host to this host or from this host to that host uh, through the same virtual switch through the two same network cards and then vSAN will be connecting or virtual SAN configured on another device will be connected uh, uh, communicating uh, as well or those features can be used as well through one virtual switch not recommended definitely but definitely we're going to at least see how it is done then we're going to add some more I need to create space actually so I'm just gonna um put it here so uh we're gonna be adding uh, two more uh vm kernel uh port groups uh, management port groups so i'm just gonna go back here and okay so um how do we do that there is vm kernel adopter which is which is just showing that hey there is one management port here already and uh, we have one virtual switch here with two physical adopters and till now there are two port groups one is responsible for traffic one is responsible for management basic management um how do we add others so if i go and hover here migrate a vm kernel network adopter to the selected switch or we can add host networking here we can go to this option add host networking right and click here so now we can add either another physical adopter uh, we can add another just vm network port group so a port group dedicated just for virtual machines traffic we can add that but we're going to go for vm kernel network adopter which is going to offer these options of uh, do you want to migrate machines or do you want to have iSCSI connection with the uh, uh, you know sand server sandbox or do you want nfs and we tried uh, fiber uh, channel uh, over ethernet and fault tolerance we're going to be doing all that um, but for now i'm just going to click that and go ahead and I'm going to stay on virtual switch zero 
just to show that okay more pro groups can be added to the same switch oh okay uh, not recommended but is it it is doable um, maybe there's just one virtual machine maybe you have need lots of approval to add another switch we switch uh, maybe there are some other reasons uh, that you would want uh, so it says that what net network label you want to put it put there so I'm just gonna say V motion uh, PG or port group it's not parental guide you know so you know <laughs> okay not parental guide. so V motion PG and there you go the VLAN ID uh, we have that option of VLAN ID if our VLANs are uh, available outside of our virtual environment if they are created on the physical environment here so suppose uh, there are ports here uh, that you have divided oh seriously how do we create it does not control C control V that is not so sophisticated ports okay uh guys these are ports okay so um then we can just have uh you know vlan port three ports vlan to vlan 10 two ports vlan to you know we can just add uh, the vlan id and then uh, the traffic would be for these three ports will not be communicating with the traffic with these two ports and if we put the id here 10 and we put the id here 11 um that as well since the traffic is coming from those um, you know suppose this virtual machine is supposed to be going through the VLAN 10 or the this virtual machine is a web server that is uh, being used by only the uh, floor uh, only the New York department or no, only the accounts department people and you have VLAN their computers so their computers are connecting through this VLAN 10 and then the physical link through that uh, it's going to go through the virtual switch where the VLAN can be defined as well that this is the VLAN 10 traffic so be aware and then this machine can be also uh, you know given that uh, uh, VLAN ID so separately VLAN can be configured and the traffic flow could in virtual environment can be uh, you know uh, synced uh, with the uh, physical environment uh, if you have configured VLANs on physical switch so the VLAN option is there but we're not going to use that now I'm just going to add one more port group here vmotion traffic and click next yes it's only by IPv4 TCC IP tag is the default next okay I'm just gonna let it grab an IP from DHCP hey my DHCP is still working and of course uh, when we are doing the when we're going to be doing the vmotion we're definitely going to give it a static IP although it's a small environment and if we put it on DHCP on um, you know physical environment we're not going to do that but here if even if we do that as long as we have connectivity we're okay so obtain automatically next and finish so I'm just adding another port group so this means hey you virtual switch zero uh, you're the only virtual switch here and I'm giving you the responsibility of migration of virtual machines as well as you know VMware a uh, virtual machine regular traffic as well as the management network traffic so good luck virtual uh, switch zero you're the last switch standing <laughs> okay that was too much anyway so um, this is Add it vmotion parental guide no it's a vmotion <laughs> uh, port group uh, so all so this is still one virtual switch and there is uh, this extra traffic that we added then I'm just going to add another responsibility to that uh, poor guy called vswitch0 and uh, then we're going to scale up a little and uh, for now I'm just gonna name it vsan hey you're responsible for that traffic as well okay so so it's going to add that traffic as well while it's adding that let me check what really happened to ESXi 02 did I just delete which is 0 as well 
Why is it disconnected? Oh, come on. Talk to me. Say something, please. Oh, okay. So, um, we said zero. Thing seems okay. And... Okay, so the tasks on the other side are done. Anyway, um, exercise zero two seems fine. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So Ali is suggesting a host went to break. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, there's a chat. <laughs> Uh, comment from Ali that uh, in port property has vSAN. Yeah, so it's a management uh, through management port we can create port group four. It's uh, for vSAN as well, uh, which will perform normally management task or providing storage uh, virtually for management. We're gonna do that lab, uh, but yes, that option is here. And uh, what we need a break so soon. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, let me just maybe restart that again. Did I? I restarted zero one, but not two. Okay, so I'll just go to the exercise zero two, and maybe I should restart it properly. F twelve root I should have given that command from there even but f11 since we have access to that and okay you go back and come back alive while we do that the experimentations on so now uh, on ASXI01 we have all uh, you know four of the board groups populated uh, and these two poor uh, physical adopters are you know taking all uh, all the traffic suppose there are there is a traffic uh, coming for the three management uh, port groups and one uh, VM network port group so now uh, I'm just going to add uh, two more switches virtual switches <clears throat> and then we're going to try to divide this task uh, between two more virtual uh, switches and two more network adopters. So what the map looks like now or the drawing looks like now is that if we keep creating a virtual switch one and virtual switch two Um, they are going to be connecting to uh, the remaining network card and uh, you know outside the host uh, you know we're, we're just gonna pretend they are connected to the physical switch but uh, those tasks of V motion port group will be given uh, to this network card so this task goes here and uh, vSAN uh, port group will be redirected to this which is redirecting to another physical network card and it vSAN switch I'm uh, you know also uh, thinking that vSAN switch should be different so this physical network card should be connecting uh, still to a different uh, switch, physical switch, and that network card should be connecting because it's going to be V motion, so that should be connecting to a different physical switch if you want very good performance. But uh, it could be, you know, uh, whatever the physical uh, ne the network team has decided for you, or if you have extra money for that. Okay, so. If this is the case, then I'm just going to go back there and try to put 
another virtual switch create another virtual switch uh, i'm just going to go to the same um, you know option here with the plus sign and click add host networking is the plus sign here and now i just want to add another physical adopter that is going to uh you know because i if i go here it's going to ask oh you want another v motion port group so i don't want that i i only i only want the v motion port group that is already created in the v switch zero to be migrated to the new switch not to create a new one we already know how to create a new one right so I'm just going to go to the physical network card uh, next. It's going to ask, okay, same virtual switch. I'm going to say, no, 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 no. I need to create another one. And I'm connecting this network card to that second one. Uh, so uh, whatever network cards are remaining here, VMNIC2. And we're not still talking about any standbys or unused. We're just going to go and map this network card to the second virtual switch press ok and go next we switch one vm next two finish so we can put the two um management tasks vsan and vmotion on the second switch and the third switch we can use uh, so there, there's a slight change of plan here uh, I would want to have um, this traffic so these two these two I'll just put it here on that second switch and then i would want uh we have like a huge amount of uh, machines suppose we have lots of virtual machines uh, so suppose if we have uh 10 virtual machines uh then let's uh distribute half or five vms to the last switch so at least you know all virtual machines are not using the VM network of uh, this switch only uh, we're gonna create another switch and we're gonna assign a port group of VM network 2 or the second VM network port group so then the virtual machine traffic uh, the port group that is responsible for virtual machine for now for example it is taking traffic from all 10 virtual machines instead now it's going to take or uh, the traffic of this virtual switch will take traffic of five virtual machines and then the last switch i'm going to create another port uh, and another port group that is going to be vm network as well port group and that's going to take the traffic of the other half of the virtual machine. So all the load from this virtual switch is uh, taken away and half of that will be redirected to the last virtual switch, right? If that's the plan, uh, then it's going to be really, uh, you know, wise distribution that uh, now if I do redirect, so I need to create uh, two or three more virtual machines here and those will be redirected to um, the second virtual switch and uh oh they're just piercing all anyway so it's kind of uh, messy now uh, but the these virtual machines will be redirected right now they're all directing to virtual switch zero they're directed to virtual switch three and the two uh, port groups for, uh, responsible for migration and vSAN uh, communication will be uh, migrated from this virtual switch 0 to virtual switch 1. Right? So that's going to just show us how much flexibility we have 
for different types of uh, features and components of uh, the networking that we have in the uh, SXI host. So if I go back now, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we're doing here is I've created a second switch. If I click that switch, now it is showing left side is totally empty. The virtual side is empty. The physical side, there is one physical adapter. It is showing according to our plan, we are supposed to, if I click switch zero, we are supposed to migrate vSAN port group and vMotion port group from this vSwitch 01 to vSwitch 0, uh, vSwitch 0, uh, vSwitch 0 to vSwitch 1. And this vSwitch 1 has its own separate physical network adapter available. So all the traffic going to those two physical adapters now will be distributed to the third adapter which is connected to a second switch. So this is just the heavy, um, you know, management traffic where migration and uh, vSAN traffic would be redirected to the second switch and through second switch to the second network adopter. Um, so this is all planning going on within one ESXi server, internal networking. Uh, so I have this target selected already and the virtual side is still empty. Um, if I go to and hover this area here, migrate a VM kernel network adapter to the selected switch. I have selected the switch. If I go for migrate here and click here. Okay, there are those port groups that were created and virtual switch zero was responsible uh, for the traffic of this port group migration. Uh, so I'm just going to select this and click next. And since V motion is already taken, let me just write the same name and see what the error is. Click next. Oh, no error. Cool. You know, it's so not good when you have the error in practice, when you're practicing. And when you actually are showing, there's no error. It's like when you take your car to the mechanic and, you know, it's not creating that same problem again. Uh, so anyway, this V motion is okay. Did I put the same name V motion PG? That's why. Okay. Yeah. So I can still reproduce that. So V motion PG next. Now it says, Hey, you, you need to have, you can't have the same name when you're creating that while I am trying to migrate, it's still saying, do give it a, another name so PG one. After migration, you know, I can even change it back if that's the company policy. Stick to the naming convention. So PG1, next. So I'm just migrating that port group from vSwitch 0 to vSwitch 1. Next, finito. Okay, so now at least second virtual switch is responsible for uh, migration traffic through another network card. I could just add three more network cards and make two network cards at least dedicated to one virtual switch for increased performance and uh, you know load balancing high availability uh, even three network cards per virtual switch so one network card for standby two network cards doing the load balancing that would be the perfect uh, scenario for us to you know <clears throat> uh, have each virtual switch uh, making available three network cards, one standby, two load balancing. Okay, there's there's your vMotion uh, traffic redirected to this physical network card through the second switch. And if I want to create, but I'm still migrating the vSend traffic as well, according to the drawing. So I'm just gonna go back to this hovering, hover over this option. Now vSend traffic, which was connected to vSwitch 0, just going to click next. There's no VLAN ID given because there's nothing on the physical network that we have configured, but we can give that according to the physical network configurations. Okay, so that will be vSend 1 after the migration. Next, finish. 
So both types of port groups are going to be mapped to the second virtual switch that is going to be uh, forwarding traffic to another network card. The load has been removed from vSwitch 0, but still we're going to further divide the traffic when we introduce the third. Um, so we have like one, two, three, four virtual machines. We should have done that on the SXI02, but today it's on strike. And uh, yeah, SXI02 is on. And what? Should I reconnect or something? Actions, enter maintenance mode. Disconnect and reconnect. I could do that, but okay. Yeah, it is connected. I can get to see that later. Uh, for now, you know what we are able to do, we can do it from here as well. Um, okay, so now the traffic is redirected within the ESXi host. So I'm just going to create the third virtual switch. So we switch zero looks better. There are two machines pointing, actually four machines right now on ESXi01 pointing to virtual switch, same virtual switch. So we need to arrange that too. Uh, if I go to virtual switch one now, it should be, yeah, both uh, management port groups are connected to this, to a new network card. I'm just going to create third virtual switch that's going to be connected to yet another network card further dividing the traffic for performance. Okay, new standard switch, next. What network adopter should I map it to? Press OK. Oh, we still have one more. I'm just going to put it on standby then. Click Finish. So now one more we switch with mapped physical adopter coming and uh, okay so there's from suggestion from Shah that uh, I should disconnect and reconnect your right because it's not doing anything so while that third switch is being created with a physical network card I'm just gonna go for ESXi02 and go for disconnect and reconnect Uh oh oh that's gonna be the wizard thing right hmm well okay I hope that resolved it okay anyway so no that's gonna be a longer visit um, we have hello oh yeah at least let me use the ESX Azure one Disconnect, okay, and then reconnect. I will do that. Successor uh, 2, right click. Okay, uh, it was not that. Reconnect tools, yes. Okay, so disconnected and then it will be connected while I'll just go back to ESXi01 and okay so the third switch is created and one network card added there but nothing on the virtual side um, now uh, let's just uh, divide the these machines so there are five machines here um, and we can just divide this traffic uh, between uh, so we're gonna I'm just going to create on this virtual switch uh, Okay, there's something going on on the 6002 um, Hmm, okay, let's try to Hey, you're right. Uh, it just worked fine Right. Thank you <clears throat> Yeah, you're fine, right? Okay, cool. So um, let's just do that, and uh, I'm just going to 
um, create create a virtual machine third third option here virtual machine port group for a standard switch so this is the option that creates uh, well it says right away there and there yeah virtual machine port group VM network right so virtual machine port group just select that why because we want to divide the traffic of uh, you know half of the virtual machine to the third switch we switch uh, which will go to the through a separate uh, network adapter physical network adapter so hence you know performance would be much better so just selecting the third option here next and the existing one I'm just gonna go to the third switch oh sorry second switch because it starts from zero next and uh, that's going to be VM network 2 uh, remember that the first uh, virtual switch 0 had a network by the name of VM network this will be automatically VM network 2 so I'm just gonna keep it like that no VLAN ID next finish <clears throat> so um, once we create the VM network here it's uh, being created right now we can then uh, go for you know telling the virtual machines that from now on you're gonna be connected to a separate virtual switch and they're not going to be seeing virtual switch they're just going to be seeing the port group called VM network 2 right so this is empty right now port group has been created but nothing inside virtual machines zero uh, but there is another physical network adopter uh, just mapped to this so if I go to the virtual machines there um, if I go back to virtual switch 0 all virtual machines okay 9832 can't see one well anyway so 98 are there so I'm just going to tell them to from now on, you're going to be connected through vSwitch 2. In production environment, we can just be careful about the VLAN IDs as well uh, when we are talking about the traffic. So I've selected VM09, click Edit. And go to The network adopt there is that VM network already showing for the network adopter of this virtual machine. So if I select now, VM network two is showing. And let's go down and check it out. Press OK. While it is going on, I'm just gonna go for VM08 as well. Right click and go to edit settings. Uh, and VM network, so it's seeing the port group, not the virtual switch. Is it? Okay, VM network 2. Press OK. So two machines are supposed to be showing, uh, connecting to the switch, to V switch 2. So if I go back to the ESXi host. <clears throat> Uh, it's going back there. So, yep, two machines less, and zero two has. Oh, I think this is VM one is the template or something because it just moved alongside with the or uh, they're related. How I just need to know that because we were doing so many crazy things as well uh, back in previous sessions. So yes, uh, so we have divided the traffic between two virtual machine port groups. Uh, uh, so VM network two port group, you can create on any of the switch and redirect the traffic of different virtual machines. Um, and uh, so there are three switches here. Now if I can check the virtual network card there 
this is related to this VM NIC. Suppose those are very critical machines. If I just go there and try to add the last network card and put it to standby, although load balancing would be better. But if I do that to standby for uh, this v vSwitch 2, so it is going on. So it's going to just be on a physical network card on a standby, on the standby, uh, but and not being used and waiting for the first virtual machine. So if I connect, try to check the VM9, who is the, which network physical adapter is it connected to? If I click uh, individually, they're all connected to just one. If this network card was normally added, uh, they would just, you know, selecting one virtual machine which would show both network cards, right? Uh, since it's for uh, that standby, so it's just showing that it's not going to be used. So it's connecting to just one network card. Okay, uh, that is, uh, you know, one of the scenarios that uh, we were supposed to do. Then if we go to the virtual switch zero and uh, go to the, and edit that, So edit setting of our typical virtual switch. Then there are many properties there. Um, number of ports. Uh, so number of ports like elastic or we can say dynamic as well. So I've just right clicked the virtual switch. We, I could just right click any of the virtual switch and they would just show the same properties. But uh, every virtual switch is supporting these features as well. It's not a blind switch. So uh, properties, uh, so this is a dynamic port. So this means that uh, in, in previous versions, uh, there was that option of that uh, you would have to define ports for, hey, what type of, uh, uh, you know, ports you would be, uh, you know, selecting for the traffic of this virtual switch that is going through this virtual switch. But now ESXi just intelligently uh, manages those ports. And then there is that uh, MTU uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, the frame size relating to frame size, uh, normal Ethernet frames are always 1500 bytes, but uh, they can just go up to 9000 bytes as well, which just means that if you want more data uh, coming with, uh, you know, each frame, so the data will be transferred quicker and the uh, processing of the ESXi would be less, but uh, the recommended setting for them to use is still uh, 1500. So we're going to just keep it to like that for every switch. Then there is that security uh, mode, where is there, where there's a promiscuous mode. If I uh, put it to accept, uh, then it will be allowing all the network sniffers uh, to catch the network traffic, grab the network traffic. Uh, so of course, in the wrong hands, those sniffers could be, uh, you know, uh, providing all the traffic to the hackers, but uh, that's why by default is reject. But uh, can anyone tell me what would the, what would be the scenario where you would put it to accept? So can anyone tell me in the chat why would you enable promiscuous mode? In what scenario you would be able to uh, put the promiscuous? So what is a promiscuous mode? Again, uh, it's go. It is. Uh, uh, if it is on accept, it's going to allow sniffers to get network traffic, capture network traffic. So do you think that uh, it should be on accept or reject? Can you put it in the chat, guys? It should be reject. Uh, there's a one... And what's the reason for that? No, but I'm I'm asking. Okay, uh, you're uh, you're all saying it's good to re put it a reject, but there is one scenario where we can put it to accept as well. What is that scenario? Anyone knows that? The one scenario where <clears throat> you would put it to accept. Um, well, there is one suggestion migration scenario, uh, but no. Um, so, uh, what promiscuous mode do again is 
<clears throat> uh, capture the traffic, uh, capture the packets. So when we need to troubleshoot, and we are using Wireshark, and uh, there is some uh, network bottleneck going on, or maybe more traffic is generated than expected from a certain ASXi. So we could put it to accept and uh, put the Wireshark to capture traffic from all the network cards or any of the network cards all of this ESXi and capture all the traffic, get the troubleshooting done, and then put it back to reject. So yeah, we can just put it to accept only for troubleshooting purposes and uh, just for just to check uh, what uh, you know network bottlenecks are going on. <clears throat> Then the MAC address uh, changes. Uh, so in virtual environment, yeah. So for troubleshooting purposes, we could just put it to accept, yeah, promiscuous mode. Otherwise, uh, keep it to reject, and that's how it is. Unless your parameter security is so good, you could uh, put it to accept and you know capture the traffic whenever you want from Wireshark or any other sniffing tool, uh, packet sniffing tool. They were gonna capture the traffic from those network cards of this ESXi and we could know what was the problem. Uh, so uh, MAC address changes. Uh, also, we can accept that because, uh, you know, if the machines are, virtual machines are uh, deleting. Okay, so there's <laughs> there's a suggestion. Yes, uh, there's uh, maybe there's a good suggestion. So let's have a 10-minute break here. Uh, Shah is asking uh, and, uh, well, Ali has already asked, so <clears throat> let's have a 10 minute break. We meet at 9.05. So we're going to continue from there. So let's have a 10 minute break. All right. So having a break. <laughs> There's a comment from Ali, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny, yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, so um, let's have that. And I'm just going to put it on mute now and unmute everyone as well. Okay, let me... Okay, so um, we were talking about, we're back from the break.
break and uh, we are uh, talking about uh, the virtual switch, uh, the inside uh, features that we have for the virtual switch and uh, So uh, promiscuous mode, we already talked about that. And uh, MAC address changes. So uh, yes, we're in virtual environment, MAC address do uh, change. And uh, can anyone have an example of uh, does MAC address really change in uh, virtual environment? Uh, so th there are many virtual machines that you know we are getting rid of or migrating to others so new MAC addresses uh, pointed uh, to the new machines or introduced or uh, uh, you know uh, there in in vSphere also uh, sorry in vSphere uh, I have I was doing another lab with Hyper-V so uh, also in uh, VMware should be the case that there's a MAC address range that is given uh, or that is being assigned and we can play uh, or do that uh, you know we can just uh, change that MAC address range as well just like DHCP has IP address range there is a MAC address range as well so yes it is uh, by default accepted uh, for uh, you know whatever MAC address changes for the virtual machines and then there is that uh, forged uh, transmit that uh, I put that uh, so any outbound frame so I just put that definition there as well so any <clears throat> so there is that to you yeah so number three is any outbound frame with a source MAC address that is different from the one currently set on the adopter so if it's uh, the virtual machine MAC address is different from uh, the uh, you know what the physical switches know the MAC address of that virtual machine uh, then uh, you know uh, they will just drop the packet so any uh, virtual so if it is on accept no filtering is performed and all outbound frames are passed so uh, you know they don't uh, physical switches do not check that uh, there is that uh, if the MAC address of the machine has changed and uh, it is not the same which I had before they just let uh, they don't filter that information or they don't check that so this is all already by default to accept um, so uh, what's going on here is that uh, then there's traffic shaping so you know it is disabled by default so there is re there's a reason why it is uh, disabled if you have very good reason to change the settings of uh, uh, you know the bandwidth that you want to use that certain type of uh, bandwidth you have very good network fiber optic or even better then you would just choose this uh, setting otherwise we won't be uh, choosing that unless we have a very good reason for that uh, also then there is teaming and failover uh, we already have uh, the so this is for outbound traffic so the traffic going or leaving the ESXi uh, and uh, route based on originating virtual port so uh, this is all load balancing options that uh, are being offered uh, for other options the physical switch side is also required to be configured so they could uh, identify the uh, on from the basis of hash information where the traffic is coming from and which particular port or the physical switch the traffic should be going to but other than that this is the base this is the uh, main uh, you know use explicit failover order or you could just go for you know uh, if the one network card goes down then the second network card which is on failover standby that should take over whenever uh, the traffic is uh, leaving and then there's a disaster so there are many mechanisms by which you can set the traffic to leave this ESXi in those two cases the IP hash and MAC hash you have to configure a physical switch as well to receive that traffic 
and these are just uh, you know advanced options or more complicated options in our case we do not have that uh, capability of managed switches in our environment so we're just going to go for uh, root based on originating virtual port so whichever port the traffic is coming from just let it go let it pass that way there is no this, so this is just the normal uh, procedure of uh, the traffic flow leaving the ESXi server and then there is network failure detection yes link status only so whatever the status of the link is detect if there's a failure detected and if the you have already defined the standby adopters just go for that um, so then there is beacon probing which is a bit more advanced option that it's going to try to identify where the problem is uh, available where, where the problem is actually uh, you know arising or ar arisen from or where the issue occurred really or which where the issue is occurring this is more advanced and it beacon probing also requires that you have uh, the managed the physical switches or managed physical switches configured for this so it could try to identify where the issue is in the network but we're gonna just uh, stick to link status only which means that if the you know network card goes down just go ahead and uh, uh, you know if there's a second network card on standby just make it active and keep the show running or keep the traffic flowing <clears throat> excuse me so <clears throat> excuse me and <laughs> well, I think I need some water or something anyway uh, it's a uh, 9 30 anyway uh, we need to go home we are already home and we need to sleep uh, so notify switches is uh, the yes or no so can I ask you this very simple question what would you think notify switches which switches there are virtual switches and then there are physical switches okay there is a comment there and I need to really <coughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> there was a lot of cough. So, uh, there's a <clears throat> chat from Ali. Uh, comment. Uh, sorry if you are listening to this huge <clears throat> gargle from my side. Um, so, uh, where's the trunk and access mode to? Uh, you know through traffic that we are still there's a slide for this and uh, if the track mode is uh, configured on the physical switches uh, then we're going to discuss that is coming in the futures uh, in this uh, next slide so we're going to talk about that uh, for now let's just go through this um, notify switches uh, yes this means that you whatever is the configuration of uh, you know the ESXi virtual switches or network cards then uh, it the switches should be notified uh, outside switches should be sent a message that okay there is some problem there uh, so we should not just put it to no yes whatever is our internal network configuration maybe the MAC address changed or uh, the network card has been changed and the, or the static IP has been changed then the uh, physical switches should update their tables uh, also and fail back yes if the network card that was lost or that was shut down is restarted and it is back then it would automatically fail back to that previous network card because that network card has uh, a static IP so of course uh, <clears throat> some of the servers would be <clears throat> hard coded to that static IP maybe there is that uh, host file um, you know <clears throat> put for some machine to communicate with the virtual machines of this uh, ASXI server sorry this sound I think you need to really <clears throat> maybe I need to put this uh, on mute when I'm doing uh -huh. <clears throat> so uh, fail back yes if the working adopter is gone and then it comes back then yes fail back to that working adopter again from the standby adopter and do not keep the standby adopter <clears throat> active 
So these are some of the settings in virtual switch. Let's go back to this, uh, you know, uh, some concepts here in uh, the slide where we did talk about the port group, uh, specified port configurations. Um, a virtual, NICs, uh, a virtual machine's NIC can connect to a port. Each uh, uplink adopter uses one port. A port group is a unique concept. Okay, so we did talk about port group a, a lot. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, more about port groups in the virtual distributed switches. The groups are called distribution distributed group port groups. There will be port groups there, which will be distributed port groups. Uh, we're going to talk about those uh, when we are uh, installing the VDS uh, and do some you know scenario on that. Uh, but uh, main things here are instead of connecting to a particular port on virtual switch, a virtual machine connects its virtual NIC to a port group. Yes, we know that. We just did that. Uh, virtual machines that connect to the same port group belong to the same network uh, inside the virtual environment. Okay, we know that. Port groups can be configured to enforce policies that provide enhanced network security, network segmentation, better performance okay so virtual vm network port group there's uh, vmotion and then there are others uh, according to their configuration they are providing high availability and traffic management um, and some more about port groups is there the talk then i'll just go ahead and talk a little about the you know configuration between the physical network and the virtual network um Port groups aggregate multiple ports under a common configuration. Yes, we saw that. Uh, each port group is identified by a network label. Yep, we did configure and in, in fact rename the label as well. Network labels make virtual machine configuration portable across hosts. Okay, all port groups in a data center that are physically connected to the same network in the sense that each can receive broadcast from the others are given the same label. So if two port groups cannot receive broadcasts from each other, they have distinct labels. Okay, if they have distinct labels, so if uh, their labels are different, they should not be receiving the broadcast. So management port group and VM network port group uh, or V motion port group and uh, VM network port group should not be receiving, you know, broadcast from their uh, port groups. A VLAN ID is used to restrict port group traffic to a logical Ethernet segment. So VLAN ID is used. Anyone knows the concept of VLAN ID? I think everyone knows that. Uh, maybe I should pass. Um, so it's a specific traffic through uh, you know different ports in the switch. Uh, for a port group to reach port groups located on other VLANs, the VLAN ID must be set to uh, 1495 so this configuration was there uh, when we were creating a port group uh, f uh, the VLAN ID was 4095 by default so port group could reach other uh, you know other port groups this is by default there when you put the create a new virtual switch uh, these were different port groups that were that we saw there and the four network cards connected to that I'll just go past there. Then this is the bigger configuration here more than one network can coexist on the same virtual switch and I'll just go past because uh, the slide is huge and I'm just going to put uh, it to some uh, you know more critical information or some information is kind of repeating uh, virtual switch yeah we talked about that combines the bandwidth of multiple network adopters and whatever and models a physical Ethernet switch a physical a virtual machine machines Nick can connect to port. come on I should have edited this slide <laughs> okay uh, example of port groups example of Nick teaming uh, we can have Nick teaming as well as yeah we saw that too Virtual network. Sorry, guys. Let me go ahead a little. So this is, uh, you know, a big diagram of uh, the virtual network that uh, is created and it's in action with all those components that we tested. 
management port, port group, view motion port group, test environment, production. We can just distribute port groups with you know dev testing as well as production testing within the main main switch. Okay, the only thing on this slide is that the required number of logical ports for a V switch is uh, 120. So 120 logical ports uh, are the maximum or default number. Each port can connect to each port can connect to a network adapter of a virtual machine. Okay, so uh, logical number of ports are 120, and what else is there? An uplink adapter on physical machine. I'm just getting to that point where Vijali said that. So V square distributed switch. Uh, v square distributed switch acts as a single switch across all associated hosts on a data center. This allows virtual machines to maintain consistent network configuration. So the main task of V V square distributed switch is maintain consistent network configuration as they migrate across multiple hosts. V network standard switch versus V network distributed switch. Uh, so there are many uh, differences uh, here as well. These features are available with both types and then there are following features available only with distribution switch. Uh, so both can forward L2 frames. Uh, layer 2 can segment traffic into VLANs. Yes, VLANs we saw the option there can use and understand A02.1 VLAN encapsulation, uh, can have more than one uplink, NIC teaming. Yes, we did uh, attach two network cards and uh, they could be teamed. Can have traffic shaping for the outbound TX traffic. Uh, traffic shaping, we saw that, the options there. The following features are available only with distributed. So can shape inbound RX traffic, which requires managed switches as well has a central unified management interface through vCenter server, which is not the case with uh, standard switches. Standard switches are, uh, you know, inside uh, ESXi server, and they have to be connected to uh, uplink or physical network card. And, uh, okay, supports private VLANs as well, PVLANs. Uh, we're going to talk about that when we come to vDistributed, vNetwork distributed switch. Um, provides potential customization of data and control planes. It's, I think, panel, but it's, it's like planes. Um, we're going to talk about redistributed switch in the next uh, class when we are doing some, uh, you know, one lab for that. And these are some of the, so I'm just going to send, send you the slide, which all, with all this, uh, 20 more slides remaining. So I'm just going to fly by to go to some more important points there virtual switch connections yes the, it has all those um, you know v network and other connections port groups all types of port groups are showing here we went through this all uh, virtual switch properties uh, now these are the properties which i was just showing and uh, some detail is there uh, virtual switch versus physical switch so now this is you know versus uh, virtual switch uh, what it can and cannot do uh, with physical switch and all these are you know now it's going to go to you know these protocols or spanning tree protocol and uh, does not support use of dynamic negotiation protocol so everything related to some advanced uh, functionalities of physical switches uh, so you can just read that uh, with you know and uh, we can just go ahead and uh, without going in depth with those uh, features physical network adopter has these features okay so this slide is more about reference uh, that you can use when you're going for interview or just wanting to know more information a lot of information is uh, has been put there uh, so uh, nick adopter types vmx net adopter vsh for layer 3 so now, so it says vSwitch only supports layer two traffic, not layer three. So VMX, but this here, let's talk about uh, 
what types of adopters are there vmnex vmx net adopter if you do not have if you did not install the vm uh, vm tools then this adopter is already available there right when you install vm tools then vlance adopter is installed with 10 by 100 mbps and it is widely compatible with a range of operating systems and default adopters so that's why uh, you know when you install operating system you should do the you should install the vmware tools because uh, you know it's compatible with uh, much larger uh, types of drivers and operating systems and then there is that intel based uh, intel uh, were you know network adopter with e1000 uh, which is one gbps network adopter that is also available after the installation of vmware tools and that we can when we created the virtual machine uh, there was that e1000 showing with the, as a network adopter for every virtual machine right by default uh, so and then there's more details for the types of network adopters here uh, that are supported with all uh, you know previous versions as well as newer versions um, windows 2003 64-bit uh, so you can just read I'm just gonna send you the slide and you can read through uh, many of these so we're gonna do the distributed switch in next class and try to do some more try to cover some more uh, before we go for you know uh, vmotion and other oh there's DRS as well of course okay physical network uh, yeah this is so distribution uh, distributed port group same diagram again um let's go ahead okay this is the use case which i wanted to do in fact uh <clears throat> it should have been given as an assignment but uh i'm not sure if uh, people are uh that active otherwise this is a perfect assignment after what we uh have uh, done with the switches uh let me show you this and uh, bigger this slide this uh you know powerpoint is more as a reference than <laughs> the actual because there's it's like a book all information that is required for uh, virtual switches distribution switches so i'm just gonna repeat some of these in the next class as well uh, but i wanted to talk about that uh, diagram and uh, i should not have put it on animation uh, you can see now that there are millions of things coming um and i'm going to, yeah this is the one so virtual machine so uh, what we need to do is, uh, if you could follow this diagram, what w will we be able to create this? Uh, we will be easily able to create uh, a DMZ environment. What's a DMZ environment? It's a demilitarized zone virtual machine. Uh, so there's a firewall server on one side. Uh, so there, suppose uh, there are four virtual machines. Two of them on either side are the firewall. Uh, DMZ is all about, you know, there's a internal firewall, there's an external firewall, and uh, so applications between those two firewalls are uh, safe by outside attacks as well as inside attacks, right? So this um, would be uh, that we will have three virtual switches and first second third and uh, we will have this virtual machine having two network cards v virtual network cards uh, that are connecting to this virtual switch and that virtual switch is connected to one physical network card the second network card of this virtual machine is connected to the second virtual switch here notice that uh, the web server and application server are connected directly to this virtual switch that that is not mapped to any network card so these applications if the data has to go 
or leave this ESXi server, it will leave from this, it will go to this switch, then go to this through this firewall, then it's going to go through this virtual switch, and then leave this uh, ESXi host. So, and there is that firewall uh, server here as well, which is virtual switch three. And um, I think you can, after what we did, and after you repeat today's lab, where we were playing with uh, you know virtual switches as well as physical network adopters, and uh, then virtual machines and uh, VM kernel uh, adopters or uh, port groups, management port groups. Uh, if you do that lab, this lab should be very easy for you. So there's that comment, uh, why is it using uh, two firewall server, why not one? So in DMZ or, uh, you know, the, in the networks, there's DMZ or demilitarized zone uh, where there are two firewalls put on one firewall is uh, dedicated for outside attacks. Okay, so all, uh, it's uh, just, uh, you know, uh, saving the company or it's on the parameter network. Uh, but there's a second firewall that is to stop attacks from inside the network. So that is called DMZ or demilitarized zone where there are two firewalls. And then we put the critical servers inside that DMZ so they are totally protected from either side inside or outside and uh, you know fewer ports are open uh, on uh, the internal firewall for internal traffic and fewer ports are open for outside firewall uh, so there this is called the DMZ but within the ESXi itself uh, we can create this lab to really get hold of uh, how virtual switches can be configured and uh, how virtual machines can, uh, we, how flexible we are to you know, communicate one virtual machine, which is communicating with one virtual switch is also communicating with another virtual switch. And uh, that virtual switch is, has no network card, physical network card attached to it. And this virtual switch is just uh, a contact point between these two applications, right? So, uh, and the same case here, what was here, that two network cards here and this. So, um, this uh, will be really uh, a test for you guys uh, that, uh, you know, uh, how could you create this uh, network? But after doing today's lab where we, we just touched every uh, component here, uh, everyone should be able to create this lab easily but if you're stuck somewhere and uh, uh, you're not able to do something just let me know or uh, I will try to repeat that uh, next time if I start this this is kind of long and it will take more time in fact you know what uh, seeing the dedication of so many people here um, I'm just going to <laughs> why don't we just start the lab uh, how do you want to take it as an assignment or you want to Shall we start that? What's the word there in the chat? Shall we perform this lab or leave it to few people who are gonna should start? All right, yay. Okay, let me just go through the slide some more because, uh, um, okay, that was a switch, virtual switch I was showing in the uh, vSphere client environment, uh, the not the web client and the VM kernel, the you know port group for vMotion, fault tolerance logging and management traffic. And I just wanted to go through the rest of the slide. This is the interface for older interface actually. Um, and MTU, okay, and the lab finally is coming. Uh, then these were the options that we talked about, MAC address changes and forge transfer. So everything is written there. You could just check the, you know, slide for all the references to uh, all the options in the vSwitch. I just wanted to go through it. We did talk about it, but all the information is written here. Um, service console and okay, VM network. Just wanted to go through this. VLAN configuration, 
Um, so there's that information about uh, you know VLANs and uh, there was information about the physical V you know switches if they are trunk together and uh, how would you communicate with the internal switches and uh, uh, so I'm just gonna go back and try to finish this lab in time to for this video and uh, you can have the slide and please go through this slide again and again and let me know or not let me know just go through this okay this is the virtual machine network uh, that we were talking about uh, what we need to do is if we have four virtual machines um, so two of the virtual machines are connected to the virtual switch and uh, that virtual switch is connected to uh, the other virtual switches here so if we want to perform this uh, I'm just going to get back to um, so this is just uh, still inside one so we have the three switches here and uh, we so switch two is already having three machines and switch zero is having um, two machines uh, so switch zero should be having the virtual machine that has the firewall or the device that has a firewall in our case we are using the virtual machine as a firewall uh, we are considering it as a firewall and then uh, there is that second switch here that so what we need to do is that we can create a VM network uh, here on this virtual switch and uh, connect to will leave one of the, so there are three machines in switch two and and two machines in switch zero so I'm gonna leave one virtual machine here in switch zero I'm gonna leave one virtual machine here in switch two I will connect the other two machines the other rest of the machines or the other two machines to switch one right so at least uh, we will have one machine and we'll consider or pretend that uh, yeah okay so um, yeah I'll just try this is the one so I'm just going to try to uh, the middle switch uh, will have or should have all the machines but how can the middle switch have the virtual machines which port group should I add anyone can tell me which port group should I add so anyone can tell me which port group should I add here and virtual switch one to connect the two uh, middle machines. Um, I'm just gonna go for add hosting here. Add host network, and I'm going to add the virtual machine port group. Yeah, no, but I need to, if I need to connect the virtual machines, I need to have a virtual machine port group or VM network, right? So next, and it's asking which switch so I'm just gonna go for switch one because I selected that next that's a middle switch there's we switch zero and so the network label will be VM network 3 next so um, oh, okay let me just okay so there is that uh, ready to complete so we have created first a port group that will be responsible for connecting the virtual machines uh, oh I thought I click finish so first of all the VM uh, network or port group for that is uh, added now I'm just going to try to right click the um, let me check which virtual machine is on 0 and which virtual machine is on 2 so I'm just going to so 0 has virtual machine 2 and 3 so I'm just gonna remove 3 from virtual switch 0 to virtual switch 1 so let's do step by step so we're pretending that virtual machine 0 
uh, virtual machine two is actually the firewall machine three is the web server so i'm just going to right click the three go to edit settings and then the vm network three is now showing here so this means uh, this machine is now connecting to the middle switch which is v switch one if I go back to this diagram, uh, there are the the machines that are uh, connecting for users, web servers and application server. They are in the middle. The first, you know, the starting and end machines are firewall machines, right? And okay, so I'll just go to the virtual uh, vSwitch two. And uh, from here, I'm just going to take VM 0, 1, and 9. I think 1 is connected to 9. So I'm just going to leave VM 8 there. If I go to 1 now, guys, do repeat that at home because if you don't play with it, you're not going to be able to understand. Uh, or do the you know that uh, V motion and other bigger labs if you don't know how to play with the networks network options. So I'm just uh, putting oh yeah VMnet three was switch number one actually okay. So switch two should not have um, Okay, so there's VM03 there. Uh, reconfigure VM01 should be coming here. Okay, it's there now. So the last switch is left with only. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Okay, I'm just gonna move eight instead. So nine would be. We're gonna consider that as a firewall. So edit setting for. So the only thing we did was uh, that on the middle switch, we added a port group for the virtual machines, right? The rest we already did in the previous labs. Lab. Okay, so switch two and zero should have one machine and each, which we are considering as firewalls. Uh, switch one the middle one is supposed to have all the other machines which are for data uh, let me check if all the effort is okay good okay what is the last step that we need to do here so if we if i go back to the slide um Middle switch has all the data uh, or application uh, virtual machines. Uh, last switch has these two. Uh, can anyone tell me what is the last step here now? What is missing from our actual network uh, which is supposed to be the last step? Can anyone know that? That what we did not do or what can be uh, the last step that we should do? Oh, well, I just wanted to know if anyone is watching. <laughs> or you could repeat, you know, just rewind that video back. Yeah, that's it. Good. Nobody replied, actually. I'm just saying to a screen. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I'm just going to... What we did is VM3 to vSwitch2. So, yeah, there is that uh, VM1 and VM3 to research. So yeah, what we did is that the machines that we prepared, we were pretending to be web servers and application server, we connected them to the middle switch. We migrated those, or we just changed their connections from the, you know, switch three and switch one, which is actually switch zero and switch two there in my environment. Here they are written one and three instead of zero and one, zero and two. Uh, so what we have done till now uh, in the middle are the machines we are pretending to be web servers 
on the end switches there is only one machine each on each end but the main thing here is that uh, okay this uh, uh, virtual switch 0 has physical network card connected and that virtual switch 2 has a physical network card connected but also virtual switch uh, 1 in our environment has a physical card connected so this means that the traffic of the middle machines will can go just directly through that a virtual machine to the network card physical network card, and they are not going to go through these uh, virtual machines so we need to remove that physical network card from that machine uh, from that virtual switch first the middle switch we need to remove the physical network card and then make sure that that switch is connected to the first switch the middle switch is connected to the first switch and the second switch um, that would be the case but do you you do see that the network card there are two network cards on the first virtual machine and there are two network cards on the second virtual machines and these network cards are virtual network cards right so right now what is done is we have uh, virtual machines having one network card each in our uh, physical environment and we need to add one network card more to the first and last machines that is one task we need to do we also need to remove one physical network card from the middle switch this is another task we need to do why are we adding two network cards to the first virtual machine and the last virtual machine because they are firewalls first thing second thing uh, they are the only source of traffic going in and out for these application servers if they are there are no if there are no two network cards there then this virtual switch already does not have a network card of its own so so the second network card is connecting these application servers to the firewall server so first step add an extra network card to the first machine and the last machine which are which we are pretending to be firewall servers so i'm just going to add extra network card to first machine and the last machine what are the first and last machines in my case if I go to the switch 0 there's only there should be only one machine here and which is VM02 and there on my other side of switch there's only one uh, VM09 so for these two virtual machines um, I will add extra network card so how do I do that VM09 if I go there Or right click and go to edit settings okay so I just need to add one more network card here network add okay VM network 2 is the port group for so what okay there's a comment here uh, what do you use in firewall and production environment those are Cisco firewalls <laughs> so uh, there's a comment in the chat a question in the chat so normally we don't use virtual machine firewalls no so this is this uh, scenario is just to know the options of uh, you know uh, v switches how to play with v switches how to play with network cards how to change the traffic flow first how to understand the traffic flow and how to change that right so this uh, this lab is just to 
uh, you know, see that how the traffic flow is done. No, it is for DMZ. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. It is DMZ. Well, Thread Management Gateway is uh, also a security gateway. Or D Melete Zone. Uh, used in all production environments to secure um, you know critical servers from outside and inside hacker attacks <coughs> Excuse me. so what I'm doing is um, I've added a second network card and I am telling this network card that one of your connection is uh, already made to the switch that we are thinking as a firewall the second network card should be connecting to the middle switch which has the application servers so the traffic from the application server could be received from this network card and then it will be transferred to this network card which is connected to the VM network 2 uh, port group that port group is connected to the uh, you know physical network card so what I'm doing is just adding a new network card and telling it to connect to the middle virtual switch that's all VM network 3 is the port group of middle network switch if I press OK here uh, VM09 has uh, two connections now and we're gonna see that when I click the ESXi host so switch to VM9 is connected to switch 2 which has the port group by the name of VM network 2 and then VM so I'm just clicking the middle switch now and VM9 is connected now to uh, you know this VM network 3 as well which is the port group of the middle virtual switch so if we go back to the diagram uh, this would be our VM09 which we were just seeing and the port group that connects to the physical network card is VM network 2 is this one and port group that connects to this uh, middle switch is VM network 3 port group so now one network card of VM9 is connecting to the physical network uh, card and the second is connected to this switch now I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to add another extra network card to this machine as well uh, first network card is already connected through the port group to the physical network card. second network card I'm going to tell to connect to the VM network 3 which is a port group of the middle switch So if I go back, I'm going to check now the one virtual machine which we are pretending to be a firewall. Uh, we're just redirecting the traffic, right? Uh, so switch zero has just one machine called VM02. If I go to VM02, oops, remember that, um, okay, if I go back to the ESXi, host we see it's zero has port group name VM network just remember that right 
vSwitch 0 has a port group name VM network and vSwitch 1 has the port group name of VM network 3. So now if I go to VM02, all I need to make sure is, okay, I'll right click and go to edit. Settings. So VM network is the port group name of the switch that is connected to the physical network. I'm just going to add a second network card for that machine. Click add and tell it to get connected to VM network three, which is the port group name of, uh, which is the port group inside the middle switch. So now both machines uh, both firewalls are connected to the middle switch right now. And if you want to see that, it should not be that slow. Whoa. So VC0 has VM02 and vSwitch1 should also have VM02 connection. Okay, VM02. And vSwitch2, the other side of the switch, has VM09 as the firewall, and vSwitch1 also has a connection for VM09. Okay, the only thing remaining is, according to the diagram, um, this switch should not take the traffic of these application servers directly outside. This switch should take that traffic of the application servers either through this firewall, maybe it is connected to the inside network, LAN, or through this firewall, which may be connected to the VAN. So all we need to do is make sure that this switch is not directly connected to a physical NIC. If we remove the physical NIC, then automatically we already have connected the second NIC of this machine to this switch and second NIC of this machine to this switch. So machine on the perimeter uh, protecting from the van any attacks and machine in the inside network protecting attacks uh, from uh, attacks from inside. Uh, those this virtual switch is connected to both these firewalls, right? All we need to do is cut its direct route to the physical network and then it will be already con or automatically connected so how do we do that uh, okay can we remove this network card so this middle switch is still selected i'm just going to go to the network card manage network card adopters select this network card and remove press ok does it work Removing all active connected physical network adopters of standard switch, vSwitch1, which is the middle switch, which contains the only VM kernel adopter on host ESX01 might result in loss of network connectivity. Okay, what else you got? Okay, let me just check this. Um, vSwitch1, VM, VM kernel adopter. Management is connected to vSwitch 0. Okay. vSwitch 1 has vMotion port group. And vSwitch 1 has vSAN as well. Ah, we don't need those two. Okay. False alarm. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to disconnect <clears throat> this from outside physical network. So its traffic should be just, you know. Okay. Cross. Okay. It's okay, let's see. Now the good, the best test should have been <clears throat> if our machines were having operating systems and we would try to ping and, you know, try to ping from 
the machine connected to this switch to you know any of the machines connected to this switch and from this machine to also to the machines in this switch but that would have been the perfect scenario of testing but no physical adapters connected to this switch and this switch is connected to vm9 which is also connected to v0 and it's connected to vm1 or 2 sorry which is also connected to v2 so this is this lab done but we still get to know that how we can use port groups v switches to simply redirect the traffic that's all we needed to understand that how can we play with the traffic and how can we reroute one virtual machine's traffic to another switch throughout going outside or going inside through another switch so this is a something that you should practice the earlier tests and this test both if you practice together you will have very good concept of how to configure you know vss or virtual standard switches then in next uh, lab on monday uh, class we're going to do distribution switch distributed switch and then if you have uh, okay there's a chat comment in uh, so that's uh, formally that uh, TMG firewall. So threat management gateway firewall could be the firewall on the gateway or on the uh, parameter network or that is facing the uh, you know WAN connection. You can p put that TMG firewall there. You could put that you know there was uh, TMG here as well, even. But you can uh, there was an ISA or ISA. Uh, so the firewall as well for microsoft used to be we could put that firewall in on the inside network or we could just put any you know cisco asa firewall uh, outside here and outside here and create a dmz all you need to do is all we always required to do is just you know uh, block all the ports and just open ports one by one which are required by these application servers that's the only purpose of our dmz or demilitarized zone Right, so you can put a TMG here, uh, uh, firewall here, and a TMG here as well, or you can just put ASA here and Cisco ASA here. Okay, there's another comment uh, from Ali. Which task is very important in production environment? After all, installation and setup HADFS. Um, production environment after all installation and setup. So there is. So it, it depends on you want fault tolerance. Uh, v motion is something that we always do. Uh, so HA would be if your company is willing to spend uh, money on more hosts then you would go for HA we're gonna try to do that here uh, then DRS is something that we need to do so it's it's uh, so many features are there that according to the needs that uh, we configure so we're gonna be going for vMotion then we're gonna go for uh, DRS uh, uh, and uh, then HA which is bigger and then go ahead with all other features <clears throat> one by one so that's all guys any questions let me know and try to tell other people that hey do not rely on just the videos maybe the video production will stop uh, so it, there should be more presence or at least you know guys thank you for those who are not coming thank you for sponsoring this lab you're becoming sponsors and i don't know if you're doing the labs because you're not sending the screenshots I don't know if you're watching the videos, but you did sponsor, so thank you very much for that. I don't know what purpose is there. Maybe you're waiting for, you know, complicated labs, the vMotion and everything, so please try to come and attend the classes, right? Okay, okay guys, everyone, so goodbye. And uh, yes, Ali, so we can talk on chat. I'm just going to stop the video here and create it, render it.